This is the back room. The back room. Back, the back room. 21 million back views. The back room. Back room. On mobile. And four weeks ago, I turned the back room into a 2D game. But it had a bunch of bugs, unpolished gameplay, and a measly four levels. But that's okay, because nobody's gonna play another stupid back rooms game, right? Uh... Uh oh. Within two weeks, my video gained over 200,000 views. I had 10x my sub count and the game had been played over a thousand times. So to ensure my viewers don't protest over such a buggy game, we need to update it. After my vacation. Let's start off with this arrow, because finding the exit elevator is quite oh. frustrating without a clear path. Instead of pointing towards the door, the arrow now points to the nearest point going to the door, making the whole process a lot easier for the player. Then I moved on to the number one most requested feature. First level one! First level one! You know how to count? Okay, I know how to count. I know I skipped level one. So I hopped onto the back of this wiki and did some investigative journalism. Level one is a giant warehouse with a feel similar to that of a parking lot. The floors are moist, the lights are buzzing, and these little hallways extrude out from the main section. After making some pixel art, I came up with the game plan. This level is split in two sections, the big group tiles and the small hallways. The big tiles can only spawn other big tiles, but these cracks in the wall allow small hallway tiles to generate. By using these rules, we have terrain similar to our references. So I put on my gamer glasses and started to code. And while I'm slowly losing my sanity, I'm currently undecided on continuing this project. So if you want to see more videos on this game, apparate a comment into existence with your opinions and suggestions on what I should do. Seriously, pause the video and leave a comment down below. And after programming terrain for 8 hours straight, <laughs> we have big and little tiles generating together. This took way too long. <laughs> Some of you have also pointed out that the game was too dark. If we turn on the lights, however, these enemies become too easy to dodge. So as a compromise, I'll implement field to view. In short, this mechanic hides parts of the levels that you shouldn't be able to see, keeping the horror of not knowing what's behind the corner. Here's the problem. I'm kind of lazy, and a British child once said that innovation is just plagiarism with style. So, yoink. So, uh, that didn't really work. I scrapped that idea for the time being and finished the terrain generation for level 1, erasing the dead end and breaking the level into chunks so that your computer doesn't explode. Then I focused on making the monsters which include stullers, skin stealers, and the one I'm most interested in, the hound. The hound is this weird humanoid creature with a back posture as good as mine, so I hopped on the photoshop, smacked that paintbrush, and drew 4 hound sprites, one for each direction. However, the hound's AI was not ideal, so after spending another 3 hours making Eminem's patented spaghetti code, I moved on to the second most requested level. Run for your life. Level 1 for your life is a giant hallway approximately 10 kilometers in length where you run away from these entities. To create this level, I basically yoinked the settings from level pipe dream and created custom tile sprites, matching the one seen in these videos. After fixing up these dead ends and adding the signature red lights, I created the obstacles like hospital beds, chairs, and stretchers. I then created a script to randomly spawn these obstacles on each tile and yeeted their mass to make them hard to push. Add some of the entities and BAM! However, I've never made or published a mobile game of this size before. How am I? So from the holy grail himself, I was able to implement this joystick pack by Fenerac Studios and make my little guy move on a phone. And let's just say I was... No way, no way! Yes! I feel like a little kid in a candy store. Ah, oh, fight me! Okay. And with the big two implemented, it was time to move on to your suggestions, which was a lot. And since I obviously can't implement each one, I sorted them by the number of people, time to make, and Moscow. Juju, not that Moscow. That's better. And at the top of the list, a pool room's danger zone. In the last video, I said this is a harmless level filled with pools. But a lot of you pointed out that level 37 has a sub-level that's dark, scary, vicious, and most importantly, gives me an excuse to make an entity called the face lanes. As the name suggests, the face lanes are known for their face. So I hopped on the Photoshop, drew a man, and slapped him into the level. But hold your horses, because we need to create the dark environments presented in level 37.1. My solution was to spawn the dark tile rarely, but flip the chances when it inevitably happens, creating these beautiful biomes. 
and the face link can only spawn in these dark tiles, but they can follow you to the light tiles, kind of like an entity following you through the backwards. After that, I made jump scares by animating a flashing background and overlaying the monster that killed you. And although I'm not the best at creating horror games, I did manage to catch myself off guard. Oh my God. Some of you also suggested to add a little nursery rhyme in that And after adding some reverb, after finally finishing the FOV mechanic, I added a new entity. The party poopers. The party poopers are basically a sad version of the party goer that apparently went extinct during the fun war. I reinforced this happy sad dynamic by slowing down the song to turn it depressing and somber. After polishing up level run for your life with some brand new alarms, I made each entity a little scarier by adding a... We first check if the entity is close to the player, then tweak some of the post-processing values using this animation curve. I also fixed some bugs and filled in these little gaps with smart corners. And after drawing up more player sprites, adding those sprites to animation, tweaking the monster's AI a little more, and 10 hours of recording, I hit that sweet build button. Uh... Hey, the game works! It's laggy, are you kidding me? I proceeded to spend 10 and a half hours the following day fixing the bugs and lag issues, which didn't really help. I'm happy. To take my mind off the frustration, I set up the Google Play Store page for the game, which required a one-time fee and, uh... I'm just gonna check that box. And after filling in all the required fields and slaying the bugs once and for all, I'm having fun. Welcome to the back rooms. On mobile. You can play the game with the lit. Ah! Uh... Someone help! Only way to be safe is if the viewer watches the first episode of the series. You guys gotta clip that video, please! <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs>